This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTR Car Guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you got car questions, I'm pretty sure we got car answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And for the shy types, you can text us at 411923 as long as you're not driving. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Road map, fact or fiction, Let's see if I can get that sound played right. Open phones and text in the top 10 car rep- Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not the way that was supposed to go. You know, April Fool's Day was just the other day. And yesterday, so, as a matter of fact. <laughs> exactly. Just the other day. Just yesterday. And so now that April Fool's Day is over, everything on the Internet is now true again. Right. You know, yesterday was questionable. Today it's true. So, you know, I found some good information, and one of the things I found was the top 10... Car repairs you're most likely to get ripped off on, and that's the first. This is the first one that came up when I just googled. Well, because what we were wanting to, well, I don't know what we were wanting to do. We we're just coming up with with stuff to talk about, and, and and what can we help you with? And we start searching this stuff, and it's like, you know, I don't know who's writing these articles, and 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 where this advice really comes from, to be honest with you, because I don't know. My uh, my my favorite, and I think this is because I'm Italian, is this one about the uh, fuel injection cleaning. We talked about that last week, right? It yeah. says, what did it say? <clears throat> well, it, it says said, put a, put a uh, tank of high-octane fuel in it, instead of the fuel injection service they're trying to sell you at the auto shop and give it the old Italian tune-up. And I kind of take offense. Because <laughs> you're Italian? Because I'm Italian, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I've heard of Italian lightning, but I haven't heard of an Italian tune-up. I mean, I, I, the problem is this advice that we get, sometimes it's coming from Grandpa, and, and, and Grandpa's advice was fantastic about a lot of things, but his advice for car repair expired in 1976. <laughs> Don't talk uh, about my pa like that. You know, so let's let's just take the fuel injector cleaning for example. I would agree, and you and you could hear me say it many times when we talked about fuel injector cleaning. A lot of it is a waste of money because it's a salesmanship thing. It's a sales yep. yeah. spiel. But in this article, it says, no, no, don't buy fuel injector cleaning services unless they're actually removing the fuel injector from the car and cleaning it. Well, there are some services and some times when that happens, but that's very expensive. Uh, you know, they say, you know, you can get a can of stuff for $7. Well, that's garbage. That's the stuff I always say. You know, you go to the auto parts store and there's a wall of. Oh, thing. yeah, all kinds that, of snake oil. That, that stuff <clears throat> is garbage. And it says, oh, just go put premium fuel. In the car. Well, that was probably accurate information in the late 70s or 80s when the only way you got the the extra additives, all the love in the gasoline, was, was, the was only in the premium. But I got to tell you, if you're using a top tier fuel, it's in all the fuel. So and not only that, you don't want to take your modern car that's supposed to take 87 octane and pour some high octane in it. It's not good for it. You know, it changes things. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily that's not good, but it's not going to help it. No. You know? Uh, so that that was a bad one, Dave. I like the one about, you know, d- you change the oil yourself because it's so easy to get ripped off going to a place because they, they charge more. After all, you can go to Walmart or Napa or whatever and, and buy the oil and, and do it yourself, right? Is it is that <clears> – <throat> for the prices of some of these oil changes that I see, I mean, is that any cheaper? I mean, because you can go, you go, you got to buy six quarts of oil. Whatever it is, you got to buy a filter. You got to get some jack stands or some ramps or whatever it is you're going to do to get under the vehicle. Hopefully, you don't hurt yourself. Uh, all those things, and you know, the thing is, is you got this waste container of oil. You know what? I've seen those <laughs> spilled over in the back of people's <laughs> trucks. It's not pretty. Yeah. So whatever you save is easily is easily lost when it spills in the bed of the truck. And, and what can go wrong too with an oil change? I mean, the risk reward there. Let's just say an oil change is fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. So now the cost differential, forget about the time, you're going to spend $25 
at least just buying the product that you need. Now you've got another $25 to work with, and that assumes you have all the tools and equipment and the skills to do it right, and you don't screw something up or spill that oil everywhere and make a horrific mess. Is it worth 25 bucks? Well, I think you could save money. I know if I laid tile at my house, I could save money over the tile guy, but I'm pretty sure the tile guy would be better at it than me. Yeah, you, can never be, you can never be the guy at his trade. Your tile job would suck. It would, <laughs> it would not be good. It would work. Good. It would always bother me, and then my, my roller blades wouldn't roll across the tile like they're supposed to. Right. So, yes, yeah, it said something in here about a simple tire change. And I, I, this article, there is some good points in here. I mean, because there is, some, there is some snake oil that you can buy at the auto shop. You get these high-pressure salespeople that are overzealous, and they'll sell you things whether you need them or not. I see that stuff happen in our business. So there is a good point to this article. But there's also, you know, some of this advice is just, I don't know, it's it's free. So well, it it's, says, it's worth about what you paid well, for. Well, it says it's, uh, one of the things that you should do yourself. And there's two, there's two I think, references for this article. You, you're getting ripped off because you're paying too much or you're getting ripped off because it's so easy to do yourself. And in that case, Dave, you talk about a simple tire change. And it goes and says, Go to a place that has an all-inclusive package to to repair tires and rotate and balance them, which I think just about any tire shop or repair yeah. shop. I know at my shop, you buy tires at Virginia Auto Service, you get the package, right? Yeah. Well, this, this article shows somebody sitting in their driveway with one tire off the car, so... I don't even. You can't even do that at home as far as balancing or anything. You can rotate, um, but most people will do that with your oil change for almost nothing. Right. And and, and I don't want to change the tire on the side of the road. Gosh, I've done it hundreds of times when I had tow trucks and stuff. What a nightmare! You can have your your insurance, uh, you know, with your roadside service, a couple bucks a month, and that's covered. I'm looking. They have <clears throat> routine brake maintenance. It says, try and save myself, you know, this is something where it shows a gal taking the tire off and all that stuff and adjusting her brakes. Ah, drum brakes are such a pain in the neck. I'm so glad those things have disappeared from my industry. Yeah, well, (laughs) yeah. I hated changing them, man. Springs go flying and, you know, bloody knuckles, and that's for the professional. You know, I was talking to a shop owner the other day, and and he was explaining to me about this customer. They just couldn't believe their comments about brakes. And, you know, he's saying, oh, giving somebody a price, and the brakes were $300 or 325 And they said, oh, my God, that's so ex- expensive. And, you know, I can get those done for $99, and I want to really do something cheap. I, I want, Can I just get cheaper? He goes to the, to the customer, uh, you do realize this is what makes your car stop? <laughs> you know? Maybe this isn't an area where we you want to be cut corners. cut corners and uh, do things cheap. But really, what routine brake maintenance do we need on a modern car? No, nothing. Nothing. Hey, no, so there is some, so what are some things that people can do themselves? If you're out there and you do like to tinker and there's things you like to do, I mean, I think always changing an air filter. I mean, they brought that air filter up in this article. That is something you can do yourself at at your shop, Matt. Maybe it's $19 for an air filter, but you put it in. There's no charge really to put it in, in, you know, in most cases. Part of the service, yeah. Part of the service. You can probably pick one up for 8 bucks and stick it in yourself. And if you're that kind of person, you want to do that, hey, go for it. Absolutely. The other thing they had in here was light bulbs. And on most vehicles, light bulbs are somewhat easy to get to. Didn't you try changing the light bulb? The other oh, day? my <laughs> my neighbor Bryn, she had a light bulb out in her Tahoe, and I, you know, I opened my mouth. I said, "Oh, no big deal. I'll just change that in the driveway tomorrow. I'll just pick up a bulb at, uh, you know, the uh, the Acme Auto <laughs> Parts." So she she brings this light bulb, and I'm like, "This is no problem," you know. I'm you know, flexing my mechanical muscle out there <laughs> in the your, driveway, and I'm like, your "Beer out. You're all ready to go." <laughs> I see a couple of five sixteen heads bolts, and I'm like, "Piece of cake. Take those out." And I'm like, "Next thing I know, I'm like, man, how does this thing come out?" So I'm on the computer, all data, looking out. How does this headlight come out? My knuckles are bloody. I'm like, man, it's a good thing I don't work on cars anymore. My hands are not soft. A little soft. A little soft. <laughs> so I changed this light bulb out, but it literally took me 20 minutes to do this thing. And, you know, you gotta, sometimes you got to remove the whole grill to get to it. Some cars, and we're talking to Carrie before the show, it literally takes three hours for a professional to change a light bulb on some of these cars. Now, that's the extreme. Some of them are easier to change. But if you break a $200 headlight assembly to save 10 bucks on labor or installation, it may not be, you know, you don't want to trip over a, a dollar to save a dime in some cases. But changing headlights is something you can do yourself. It could be easy. What about a battery change? For battery example? change for sure. Well, you know what, Dave? And I think, too, it depends on the car. I've said before, there's been eras where the car is hard to work on, then it gets easy to work on, and then they're hard to work on. To, you know, 
So if you're driving a 1994 car or a 92 or an 88 Honda, that battery change is really easy to do. You're not going to have a lot of problems. You do one on a late model Infiniti or maybe a BM, well, BMW, you're crazy. You, I mean, there's so much work you have to do just to register the battery, and, and, and those aren't simple. But you can have things like the windows not working properly. People hook things up backwards. So if there's a difference between I'm capable of doing it, I think, or I've done it before, and actually doing it and doing it right. Well, you know, you talk about batteries. Now is the battery season. We're coming up on summer, and if you've had your car battery for a couple of years, coming around summertime, you may be living on borrowed time with that battery. And these modern cars, there is so much electronics on them that you've got to have a good power source, uh, and that's a good battery. So one of the batteries that you'll see at a lot of the professional shops is going to be the Interstate brand. It's been around for a long time, and it's you can find Interstate batteries coast to coast, and they do come with a good warranty. So Interstate batteries is what we use at our shop. They are, you know, it's good batteries, and, and, and again, you want to get that checked out. You don't want to be the guy at the gas station in Yuma. I mean, it's been hot or it's been warm. It's kind of cooled back off again. Now's your chance. Get it before it gets you on the side of the road. When we come back, we got open phones at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen. That music got a little loud there, didn't it, Dave? I was. I, was, yeah, I thought I, you forgot who you were. No, you know, Breeze over there jamming us out. I thought I, I didn't want to have to, you know, scream. Sometimes these headphones, it's I keep my headphones a little loud, so it's hard to well, tell. Bree bought a new truck. I saw it on her Facebook page. Toyota <laughs> Tacoma, the old taco. I man, I used to have one of those. And I sold it, and I miss it. I wish I had it back. You, you were going to buy it, buy a new one, I thought. But anyway, I'm Matt Allen, Dave Riccio. Every single Saturday, we are here to help you with your car bumper-to-bumper bumper radio. So if you have a car question or a car problem, just give us a call at 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. You can text us as well, 411-923. And kind of our topic today was the top 10 repairs you're most likely to get ripped off on. And, you know, Dave, I, I got to say, you know, there's there's all kinds of bad advice out there. And I, and I don't know these people writing these articles, if they're just trying to fill up, you know, they call it clickbait or they're, they're, they're preying on what consumers are afraid of or are going to get ripped off and trying to drive people to these websites. But you read through some of this stuff and, you know, I don't, I don't know that I can necessarily a, agree with it very well. Ah, you, know? uh, you using the whole fist talk? <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I mean, when you go to the I, I, the point there is that you know you can do a lot of this stuff yourself. You know, there's things you can do yourself to save money that you don't have to pay for at the auto sh- at the auto shop. And so, if you're one of those type of people and and you want to do that, it makes sense. You know, and you know people do brake jobs in their driveway. That'll save some money. You know, any more though, it's getting it's getting probably more complicated, and we have less time to mess with that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd rather send, spend my weekend on the back porch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, than, there's a lot. Than of, laying tile in my house because yeah, I hate laying tile. Well, I've tried it. 
Yeah, I guess it, I mean it depends on where you are in your life, where your car is in its life cycle, where where um, you know just just what what you need to do to maybe you know if, if you've got to fix your car because you got to get to work and and you got to put food on the table or whatever your situation is, yeah, we're we're gonna have to do some of these repairs yourself. But at times it it just doesn't seem that that it makes much sense at all. So. Um, you know, if you have some of these repairs, maybe you're not sure if you can tackle a repair. What or you want some advice from us on, on what repairs, you know, or what you have to do to be pre- prepared for a call? We can help you with that. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven, and of course, again, the text message four one one nine two three. Well, I think what the consumer hears sometimes, Matt, is is uh. You know, I've talked about this before. Wah, 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 and then 900 bucks. And so they don't really know, <clears throat> you know, am I being ripped off? <clears throat> I was at a, uh, I was at a, I was a chaperone, if you can believe that, at a fifth and sixth grade overnight oh, at uh, Tonta Zona, I think is the name of that camp. But uh, I was talking to some of the teachers, and, and it seemed like they all had a good relationship, someone that took care of their car. And that's the biggest deal. I think if you do some of these kind of fast food type of deals, like, hey, they seem to have a good coupon, I'm going to go there, you know, that's that's maybe a, a shop that's run, you know, where profit's number one, you know, and we don't really know you or anything like that. So that may be different. But they had relationships with good shops and they'd be going there for years and they didn't have any anxiety about it. And I think that's the key because you can get ripped off. And, and the thing about ripoffs is it kind of goes two ways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it goes two ways is that sometimes people are intentionally or maybe they lie to themselves about selling what they're selling. And they could be just fraudulent that way. But the other way that I see people get harmed in auto repair shops is when they're working with people that are inept about fixing cars. And so they're getting repairs that that guy may honestly believe they need, and they're not doing them right. They're not doing them right, or they're just wrong about what needs to happen. It's, it's rip off by incompetence. By incompetence, it may exactly. Not be intentional. You may uh, go into an auto shop, and you may have a bad spark plug in your car, maybe running rough. But if a guy doesn't know what he's doing, he may sell you a whole engine, not because he's trying to rip you off, just because you know maybe you know we talk in our shops. There's A techs, there's B techs, there's C techs. They're they're not all the same. Some of us went to class, some of us didn't go to class, some of us were top of the class, bottom of the class, but we're all still called technicians, and we have grease under our fingernails. But it doesn't mean we all know what we're doing. They're not, not all equal, you know. And I can tell you, I, I'm I'm actually looking for a technician. So by the way, if you're a really good technician out there looking for a home and a good auto repair shop to work at, Virginia Auto Service is hiring. We will, we'd like to add one of you to our staff. But uh, so I've got ads running, Career Builder and Indeed. Dot com put some stuff out there on Craigslist, and I got to tell you, Dave, there's not a lot of good technicians out there. This industry has a shortage. So, as a consumer, now is the time to go find your home. I think we're going to lose auto repair shops uh, over the over a course of some years here, and it and the the kids and the schools are not coming into the trade. So you want to talk about people being incompetent, and not having uh, the ability to fix cars. You're going to have a hard time finding a shop to fix cars, and if you don't have a relationship with one of those shops, you may be having a hard time getting into one of those shops uh, here pretty soon in the next couple of years. For sure. Well, let's go to Rick in Gilbert on a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta. How can we help you, Rick? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, the problem I'm having is my um, I have a beat that's saying my door's open. And my driver's side door is open, so it just beeps, beeps, beeps constantly. And then it goes to, now my seatbelt's not on. So I don't I don't know where do you go to get something like that checked out. I mean, what do you do? It just constantly says my door is open and beep, 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 beep. Right. Um, Dave, go well, ahead. Well, an answer to it, I mean, as far as you go, if you don't have a good shop that you have a relationship with, bumper to I know. Bumper to bumper no. radio dot com. There's there's a okay. list, list of great shops. Any one of those is perfectly capable of handling a situation like that. And I think I think I see people run into that where something on their car doesn't work, and they're like, I wonder if those guys down the street take care of it. Well, you know, if they're the modern technician, yeah, not a problem. They're gonna be able to figure out. Hey, we, maybe we got a bad door switch going on where it thinks the door's open, or maybe we got a bad seatbelt switch, or maybe the two are on the same circuit, so maybe we got one problem causing two different issues. But that's not an overly complicated problem to fix unless it just happens to be some well, wire buried somewhere. But you don't know. That's the thing. You really you really don't know. 
and, and the tough thing for a shop is we have to we have to get out a wiring diagram. That's your roadmap. We've got to look and see what can make these two lights come on, and then start reducing that down into one one common denominator. And I'll tell you, you go into a repair shop, and people will say, "How much?" That's impossible for us to tell you. And, uh, you know, we might say, well, we need $300. $300 to fix it? Well, we we don't know. And so we have to have some leeway to start going there and doing some testing. It may not, all, it may not be $300, but, heck, it might be $700. Right. Uh, you know, you, you just don't know, but we've got to go in and spend time to find that. Absolutely. And remember, when, you, when you're going in and taking these things apart, you're only halfway there because then you've got to put it all back together. So... You really, you know, these things can sound easy and be really complicated, or sound complicated and turn out to be, you know, just not a big deal at all. Thanks for the call, Rick. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. And you're in Gilbert, so we've got Mesa Auto Works out there. You know, you got Stan, Stan Senior, Stan Junior, and Stan the and Third. Jeremy's working <laughs> there too. So it's it's a family shop. You can go make a home over there. Also in Gilbert, we got Desert Car Care. They're kind of over East Valley that way. Either one of those shops are going to be perfectly capable of handling that for you. All those shops that you find at BumperToBumperRadio.com are shops that Matt and I both believe in, and we're the owners right there if there's a problem. It's not, oh, you got to call and leave a message here, and that's got to go up a chain to leave a message here. You're only maybe a step or two away from the owner in the shops you're going to find at BumperToBumperRadio.com. So we come back. We're taking phone calls at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR where you can talk about a repair on your car if you think you're being ripped off. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed. Not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection. They do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Good Works Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Good Works Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. KTAR News, on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com, and on every device with a KTAR app. Arizona's breaking news and traffic, now. KTAR News Time, 1130. I'm Mike Sackley. Authorities say a small plane crashed on Interstate 15 in Southern California, striking a car. One person is dead, five injured. California Highway Patrol says it happened this morning about 50 miles north of San Diego County. The crash was blocking two lanes and causing backups. It's happened again. A man has hopped the White House fence. The Secret Service says it arrested a man late Friday night who threw a backpack, then jumped over the north fence of the White House. 
The incident occurred more than four hours after President Obama returned home from a major nuclear summit in D.C. The Secret Service says the man was taken into custody without incident and charged with unlawful entry. That's ABC's Alex Mallon at the White House. Updating a story we brought you this morning, a bicyclist now dead after being hit by a pickup truck. It happened at the intersection of 27th Avenue and Bethany Home. The driver fled the scene. Authorities are looking for a black GMC Sierra missing its left front headlamp. 27th Avenue at Bethany Home is back open after being closed for several hours. And now for a check on traffic in the ArmyGold.com Traffic Center. Here's Mike Daniels. Thanks, Mike. Still working that crash on Indian School Road west of Central. We have a wreck at Litchfield north of Thomas to watch out for. Crash at Yorkshire and 35th Avenue and that wreck cleared on the 51 northbound at Union Hills Drive. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Thanks, Mike. Looking like a good day weather-wise around the valley. Sunny skies up to a high of 85 degrees. We're looking at clear skies tonight with a low of 58. Sunny skies as we head into Sunday with a high of 89. And sunny for Monday with a high of 92. Right now at Litchfield Park, 77 degrees. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Whether replace or repair, call Howard Air. Matt and Dave, KTAR's Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper. Back with you next. I'm Mike Sackley, KTAR News. Home Run King Henry Aaron says it took him 17 years to get 3,000 hits in baseball and only one afternoon on the golf course. Golf has its ups and downs, and we cover them all. Around the world and right here in the Valley, the Bunker to Bunker Golf Show takes you inside the game. So join me, Greg Ellis, along with Marty Monahan and Jim Hill, Saturday mornings from 7 to 9 on Arizona Sports 98.7. Bunker to Bunker. Golf lives here. In life, there are certain relationships outside of family and friends that are important. For instance, if your car breaks down, you want to have a relationship with an auto repair shop that you trust to repair your car. The same goes for your doctor, your accountant, and your attorney. Why? Because the services they provide involve health and financial decisions, and it's important to hire a trusted professional. This same principle applies to real estate. Hi, I'm Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. For most of us, our home is the largest financial commitment and asset we will own in our lifetime. So when you decide to sell, it's important to hire a professional, knowledgeable real estate agent that you can trust to represent your interests and provide the best customer service available. If you would like a consultation to help determine the value and discuss a comprehensive marketing plan to sell your home, please visit my website at lisareneehenry.com. That's Lisa Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Henry.com. Come experience the difference a great real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Not Riccio anymore. I'm correcting my name. I've been saying it wrong. Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen. There's no... There's no discussion about how to say Allen. There's just nothing sexy about it. I don't think I'm ever going to call you Riccio. Dave Riccio. The only reason it came up is I was I was a chaperone at my kid's uh, little overnight trip, and he goes by Riccio, my wife goes by Riccio, and I say Riccio, and they don't know who I am or what they're, you know, so I'm just going to set the record straight on they, that. They, they can't, they, people can pull that one together, huh? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, welcome back. we got open lines at 602-277-5827. We've got Lee, Jared, and Bill. And let's go with Lee. He's got a Scion made in 2008. How can we help you, Lee? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, good morning, men. Um, yes, I got my Scion in 2008. I got it in 2007. And it's been great. I mean, it has over 100,000 miles. And this is the first time that I guess it needs uh, front brakes. 
And so is there anything specific? My husband's going to do it. He said he can just knock it out, no problem. But is there anything in specific that you've heard uh, in reference to that type of car that would give him a problem so I can tell him ahead of time before he starts? It's a pretty straightforward, you know, vanilla brake job. Um, it sounds like you must be easy on the car if you got that many miles on it without sending it putting a set of front brakes on it. But I imagine you do a lot of commuting on the highway living in Casa Grande. But, uh, you know, I always say, you know, machine the rotors or replace the rotors. You know, I wouldn't just, what I do, call pad slap it. I'm not a fan of pad slapping. Yeah, you want to, you want to, mm. you want to machine. You know, like Dave said, machine or replace the rotors. I, I would only replace them if they need to be replaced. They have to be measured. You, I guess you could take those to your auto parts store. Get a good quality set of brake pads. Get the most expensive ones they have. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, they, you know, they need to be matched. You can go get the right pad and the wrong rotor, and you can have metal compound issues and and and, and matching issues there. Some of the mistakes we see people made that do their own brake jobs, do one side at a time. Just don't go rip both sides apart. You can always have the other side to go back to refer to, so only take it side part one side at a time. You've got to use grease on the on the brake helper slides and slides and, and contact points. And clean all that stuff up. A lot of people take their big giant pliers or the pry bar to, to collapse the caliper and they squeeze all that old nasty brake fluid that's in the caliper a back up through the master cylinder and in the line that ends up overflowing. Could damage the master cylinder, so you want to open the brake bleeder and squeeze all that, uh, collapse the piston and get the dirty fluid out, bleed the brakes. I don't know if that one's got disc or drum on the back, but if you do a front brake job and don't do anything with the rear brakes, like clean and adjust them, you're going to have a horrible pedal. So there's a lot more to it than just knocking it out real quick. For sure, right? and, and brakes are one of those things. If you're if you're handy, and you know, I did. My, I remember doing brake jobs as a kid, and it wasn't it wasn't you know it's something people can do. Sometimes people, you know, if you're just not mechanical, you might be in over your head. You know, that would that would be the only thing I would say because, you know, I've, I knew a guy that literally, you know, was doing a brake job in his driveway and the car fell on him. It was not good. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. Well, there's the whole safety aspect of it, too, I guess, both during the job and after the fact if they don't. Uh... And I've done, I've done some dumb stuff working on my car in the driveway where, I, you know, I was going to change U-joints on my Jeep. And I took the drive shaft loose, and the car started rolling right over the top of me. It gave me a little squish. It didn't go over the top of me, but it just, like, pinched my gut, man. It was or no or forgetting to pump the brakes after you've done the brake job. Yeah. You're going to put the pads on, put it all back together, bolt the wheels up, go drop that baby and drive and step on the brakes. And because you haven't pumped them, you're, you're backing through the neighbor's car or over the curb or, or doing something <laughs> like that. Like that. So uh, Thanks for joining us, Lee. 602-277-5827. 602 602- 277 KTAR. And the other point, Matt, you made was buy good pads. You know, sometimes I think the people at the auto parts store want to help you out and get you the, you know, save you money on the cheap pads. You know, people don't realize that when I call to order pads to put on your car, you know, I can spend $10 or I can spend $50. And there are two, you know, one's, you know, made of bolonium carbide. I don't know. I mean, it just, but there is definitely a difference. And we've been to, you know, we went to the Centrix, Matt and I went to the Centrix brake plant. And it's amazing the technology that goes into a good set of brake pads versus some of these, you know, just get you a cheap pad. White box. Well, let's go with Jared in Peoria on a 2005 Dodge Ram 1500. How can we help you, Jared? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. It's actually Derek. Um... So I have a 2005 Dodge Ram, and it's got 251,000 miles on it. I've had it. I bought it back in 2005, and I tow pretty much every day with it. I drive. I, I tow like an old lady, and I'm replacing the water pump every single year. Now, it's lifetime warranty, so I kind of can just keep going back and kind of the only expense I have is fluids. But I'm wondering if there's anything I can do different. Yeah, yeah, there is. But you know what, um, Derek, you say that the only expense is is the fluid. Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to challenge you on that a little bit. I hope you value your time a little bit because your your time has the value to it. And if you have a, you know, this water pump keeps leaking all the time. Um, when's it going to leak when you're in traveling or or something goes wrong and it damages the engine because the car overheats? So, so I, I don't know. Um, Maybe you're not using the best water pump, but I know we had a, a rash of problems with water pumps at my shop, Dave. 
And what we found out after sending these defective, what we called, quote, defective water pumps in, uh, and it, was, it wasn't just us, it was a lot of other shops, and talking with the, with the manufacturer's rep, when they would dissect these allegedly defective water pumps, they'd go in and they'd find some small debris that was hung up in the coolant, suspended in the cooling system, and it tries to go out and it gets forced past the seal. It gets hung up on the lip seal, and then water starts leaking by. So what we've changed in our process, when we're changing a water pump now, the cooling system needs to be flushed out. You have to clean it and get all the scale and any of the suspended, the solids that are floating around in suspense in there need to get lifted up and get flushed out so they're not being pumped into that new water pump. And the other thing you need to be using is, is doing distilled water because if you're just taking the old tap water out that's got a lot of junk, mm, you know, a lot of hardness, a lot of dissolved, a lot of, solids. A lot of dissolved solids in there. And if I bet, you know, chances are if you look in the radiator, you might see a bunch of that calcium buildup. So that could be the problem. Maybe when you go change this water pump out again, switch to a different brand. Ask them if they have another another uh, product line for you to try. Yeah, and sometimes they just have you pay the difference if there was a more expensive water sure. pump you choose from. Say, I want to return this one and get the next one up. So thanks for the call, 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Bill in Gilbert on a 2009 <laughs> Nissan Altima. How can we help you, Bill? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, I recently had uh, $1,200 done in uh, – mostly upkeep with my Altima. Um, I, I did look around. I got it fixed at the AutoNation Nissan dealer. And I have I, kind of a three-part question. The first one is I couldn't believe that they're charging $500 for my for platinum tip spark plugs. I remember back in the day I could buy them for 5 bucks and you just stick them out and stick them in. So my, my question there is, um, is that something that is, normal and then how do i know that they even put the right one in um so anyway that's the spark plug question i also have a, a continuous leak on our cv boot the left front cv boot and after calling around different mechanics i've learned that the the, the best process is just to you know replace the axle because it's a lot cheaper so i wanted to ask your opinion on is that something that you should just have them refurbish or, or buy an axle and, and just get your thoughts on that. And I appreciate your time. Well, you know, I on the on the axle question, I'll take the axle question. Is that, you know, we when we pull out a transmission, we got to remove axles, you know, to get the transmission out. So if there's a boot that's leaking and it hasn't been torn open, it's just leaking a little grease. Sometimes we just replace the boot. Because what I can do is I can take a really nice Nissan or whoever made that. That's a nice axle in there. Some of these replacement axles aren't, the quality isn't all that good, and I end up with vibration problems because of the new axle I just put in there. So, I mean, they're spitting some of these things out overseas pretty darn cheap. So anytime I can reboot or rebuild that good OEM axle, I would rather do that versus replace it. Now, if the boot has been torn open and all the grease has got out, and all the dirt and grime has got in, it's not worth rebuilding. You know, Dave, I want to take that just one step further. People talk about the CV boots, and they're and it's usually the outer boots that tear, but a lot of times it's the inner boots that leak. You've got you've got really thick grease on the outside, and wouldn't you agree that you find on the inner boots they're flinging grease, and that's more of a, a lower viscosity, very runny kind of goopy oil and we see those leaking all the time so you want to quantify that leak i mean how is it flinging a little bit of boogers up on the on the transmission of, of grease and it's not that big of a deal because i can tell you we've just reband those a lot of times oh too. yeah you cut the you cut the uh, metal bands off and then use a use a style that you don't have to have the axle out to reclamp that boot down and tighten that seal up and clean it up and and you may not may not have to uh, spend the spend the money to replace the axle on the spark you want you want to say no, go ahead okay on the spark plug question you're right but they're let, let's just take that what you said five hundred dollar they're charging five hundred dollars for spark plugs no they're not they're charging five hundred dollars for the spark plugs and the installation of the spark plugs. Um, you don't know that they did all, put the right ones in. You would have to assume that they did. It's the dealer. They know what they're doing, right? Um, but the spark plugs, I would imagine that the cost of the spark plug, you probably paid somewhere between 25 and $33 for the spark plug itself. Three of those spark plugs are pretty easy to do. They're on the front side of the engine. 
you're really paying the labor for the ones on the backside. You've got to re- maybe remove the intake manifold, plant them. Uh, there is a lot of work to do to get to those spark plugs, and you want to use the good yeah, ones. Yeah, if it's a V6, I don't think that's out of line at all. Not if it was just all. a four-cylinder, and that's one of the things where what repairs do you do yourself? Four-cylinder, four little plugs on top, pretty easy to get to. But as soon as you throw a V6 in a car... Three of them are hard, and Matt, you were making a joke earlier about, you know, we get this one particular car comes in, and it's got a misfire. We know it's it's the hard spark plug that didn't get changed because some shops, you know, get five out of six in there if there was one that's really difficult, and they're not ethical people. Well, and they're but, also the shop doing it for $49. Yeah, exactly. They're doing, for, they're doing it for a third of what it could, should cost because they're only doing 80% of the work for you. So, so you know, that, that's the problem. <laughs> and those spark plugs, we talked spark plugs a couple of weeks ago, Dave. You drop one, you know, you set it on, you know, a lot of people make the mistake. They set the spark plug on the battery. Now you've got the acid in there and you put mm-hmm. that in. You do that three hour job and, and you, you cracked one of those spark plugs. There's, there's a bit of risk. Uh, you know, the risk-reward ratio sometimes gets out of whack on some of these jobs, too. We've got Ben, Diana, and Steve and a couple open lines for you at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Camelback Golf Club announces an easy way to save some green at our two renowned courses this season. Simply go to camelbackgolf.com and use the promo code CAMEL16 and receive 15% off the online rate. That's CAMEL16 for a quick, easy 15% off. The Valley Favor Padre course and the renowned Ambiente course are both in fantastic shape with greens that are incredibly smooth and fast. So Padre or Ambiente, easy. Play them both and save 15% off when you use the CAMEL16 code when you book online at camelbackgolf.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts... Take it to Kurt. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. We're back. Uh, what is that, Poltergeist? Are, are they back? Or, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so... It's been a long Saturday morning so far. I'm Matt Allen, Dave Riccio. 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 Dave Riccio is here. You're going to have to bring in some Italian food or something, Dave, in the, in the morning. What's an Italian breakfast? You hey, bring, you know what? I'll get you, you an some? Italian tune-up if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> What's that? Take a soup, super unleaded? Come on. Well, so, we, got, we got Ben, Diana, Steve, and Dean, and I want to hit a couple of these texts. But first, oh. I just want to mention something. If you listen to the show a lot, you know I like racing and stuff. At Phoenix International Raceway tonight, there's an IndyCar race. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, if you are like cars a little bit or looking for something to do, some fairly inexpensive entertainment, and you want to see a good race, you ought to go out to PIR, watch the IndyCars. These guys are going around the track. I think the track record was broken yesterday at 192 or 194. So it is. 
Less nineteen point one second mile. They're really getting getting it done out there. So it'd be some good entertainment. I think there's a concert better than Ezra's playing beforehand. Oh and, yeah, I like and, that. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, so it'd be Don't good. blink, you'll miss them going around the track just you will. once. You will. <laughs> So I want to get to a couple of these texts. we got someone here with a F-350. When they hook it up with their fifth bed, they get a thump, 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 thump. And they're thinking it's the carrier bearing. And you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I think it is the carrier bearing. When you load it up and you put a little extra load on the suspension and squat things down, something that's not normally bad gets aggravated, and that shows up. So when I hear that thump, thump, thump that happens for the first 10 or 15 feet, that is exactly what I'm going to. And we've got a text here. Uh, Dave, what's your opinion on CVT transmissions in a Honda? And I can't speak so much for Honda because Honda's, they did the CVT right there at the end of the 90s. And they kind of disappeared from the Honda, and now they're starting to come back into it. And you're starting to see more and more manufacturers go to it. The technology is easily 100 years old. They've been in snowmobiles forever. Um, but, you know, we are seeing them. They are pretty failure-prone and expensive to replace. And at some point, In it's general, been, that's that broad stroke. That's that though. broad stroke. I can't speak specifically to some of these later model Hondas because I don't have enough experience with them. But uh, CVTs, I don't know that I'm a fan. You know, in general. But, you know, again, that's broad Hey, maybe Honda did it right. Maybe they came out and found that they didn't make it perfect. They, You know, they disappeared. They pulled the old Houdini for a while in the CVT. Maybe they went and mastered it, and, and it's good now. But the only way you're going to know is go buy that car, and you'll know in a go, few years. Yeah, go try it out and see what happens. So that is that. Uh, we also, let's see, what other texts we got here, Matt? Uh, we got to get to some of these phone calls. Let's go with Ben in Queen Creek on an 08 Jeep Patriot. It's probably a CVT question. How can we help you? Ben, you're on hey, Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, so I bought an 08 Jeep Patriot about a year ago. Uh, the issues coming up is every time I fill the tank all the way up to the top, uh, the engine will die right afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I did some research, and there's something to do with a valve that doesn't close. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's never been a recall on it. Quit filling your gas tank, and the problem will go away. I guarantee you. Yeah. So just don't just let it dot, let the, uh, the the pump switch off. Yeah. And don't try to top it off. Well, no. You should. Are you topping it off? Is that what you're saying? When you fill it all the way to the top? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. You're creating the problem. Then you. The, that's the last thing you should that's do. A nice thing to say. Is um, the the last thing you should be doing is is filling. You know, is is going in and and after the fact and just sitting there trying to get the last four ounces, two or three shots at a time, because you're you're filling that up, in in that fuel, raw fuel, is going into the vent and probably sucking into the engine. Yeah. And that that valve that it's contaminating, those lines, those are meant for vapors. They're not meant for... Yeah. Not meant for liquids, so um, yeah, just it's always bad advice. You ever see the, the signs all over every single gas station? Warning: Do not top off. <laughs> I, I I top off. You know what? I'm I'm right there with you, Ben. Because you I know what? To. I know that I could get at least a couple more blocks if I just squeeze in that extra little click, 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 just to make sure it's 100% full. So I'm at least a top. I'm a three-click topper offer. Is that right? I'm a, I'm a no-clicker, but I would I would I would go for the no-click and see if that if that solves the problem. And I would imagine too, if you've been doing that long enough, you might even have a check engine light on. We've got Diane in Phoenix. She's got a 1981. Ox Concord from AMC. AMC. I was just having a conversation the other day with somebody about what vehicles AMC really made. You know, he had the Gremlin, was it? Yeah, what's that? Uh, who's the movie with the two goofball, Neil and Bob? Or, oh, uh, yeah. Ted's Excellent Adventure. Didn't they have no, an AMC it was, or something uh, like that? I, I can't even think of the name of that movie. Wayne's How about World. The Pacer. Ah, the oh, Pacer. Pacer, yeah. <laughs> For sure. How can we help you, uh, Diane? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hello. Um, it, we've been the original owner of this 81 AMC Concord. It's got about 127000 on it. Um, for the last half a year or so, something has been draining the battery. Like once a month, the battery is dead. Uh, do you have any idea? My mechanics have looked at it, and nobody can find out where, what's doing that. Uh, new mechanic. <laughs> I mean, 
He's yeah. just he's oh, rude today. <laughs> We're sure your mechanic is a perfectly nice guy. Uh, but those are what we call key-off draws, where something is maybe drawing power. And sometimes it's a matter of getting in the trunk and closing the trunk on yourself to find out that the trunk light is staying on every now and then. I don't think they had trunk lights in 81, Dave. I don't know, man. The AMC, the <laughs> Concorde. But there is something staying on, and so it is one of those deals. that They can be frustrating to fix, especially if it's intermittent as once a month. That's not very often that that's happening. So I think I think the mechanics doing a great job. I think you're being hard on them. I I could I could have been, but yeah, it's just a matter of someone doing the right test. I mean, they, maybe they're not having the car long enough. Uh, you know, they're. I'd start if you have added any aftermarket alarms and kind of getting it back to its original shape. If you sometimes you got to disconnect some of that stuff. On an older car like that, remember they made, used to make that little breaker you could stick right on top of the battery where you could cut your <laughs> you could cut your battery power if the car was going to sit for a while. But there's there's some things that people do that ha- when they have these these vehicles with these gremlins in them where they get get a dead battery from time to time thanks for the call D- diana if you if you're looking for a shop bumper to bumper radio.com we're going to go with dean in mesa on a 2002 audi gt how can we help you dean you're on bumper to bumper radio oh how are you guys doing fantastic i have a 2002 audi tt and with about 150,000 miles on it and uh probably about the last two or three months when i go to drive it if i get give it gas where the turbo wants to spool up, it just bogs down instantly. But if I drive it where I, you know, just kind of like grandma where you don't give it much gas, it runs smooth. And I don't know what's causing it to just bog down. As soon as it feels like as soon as the turbo wants to open, it just bogs right out. Are are there any check engine lights or fault fault lights or anything on? The, uh, the one check engine light I had even before that came on was a P0171, which is a Bank 1. Bank 1 lean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be a number of different things. That Bank 1 lean condition very well could be signifying part of this problem. Lean means not enough fuel. Uh, bank one is going to be, you know, bank one or bank two. If it's a V6 engine or V8 or something like. But the, this it's one's a four cylinder, one point eight. Exactly, it's a one point eight turbo. So bank one is the whole engine or the only bank that there is, and uh, maybe you've got low fuel pressure, and causing the car to run lean. And it's got to the point now when you when it wants boost, it's going to add fuel. And if you've got no fuel to burn, you're not going to have power. They do have uh, wastegate control valves on those. That could be an issue. A number of different things, but it's going to be one of those deals. Get into it's, a shop and get it diagnosed. It's funny how that check engine light shows up, you know, a month or two before the actual symptom shows up. So, you know, that car is, a lot of times, they're pretty good about finding a problem before you even feel the problem. So, hey, we're, we're starting to run lean in this case. And, and uh, you know, now your drivability symptom is showing up where you're starting to see an issue. Anyhow, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bree, for running the dials and working the phones and enjoy that new truck. Get all those fluids changed out like you're planning on doing is a good idea. So we will see you next week.